D&D in Space. Okay, so welcome guys to the first episode of Echo One. So this is going to be a futuristic style campaign. I'm going to smoke some weed while describing kind of the world that we live in. So in this world... Imagine if everybody used magic to be able to propel giant sky cities into orbit. So every race has the ability to transfer in and out of uh, space. And they all came from separate planets. So right now you guys are on Terra, which is the main consortium, the main blocking area for basically the entire shipyard of your side of the galaxy. Um um, off to the left, right, north, south, east, and west, there's thousands of planets, but the main ones are uh, going to be specific to races. So you're going to have like a halfling planet, you're going to have a gnome planet, you're going to have a dwarf planet, and all that kind of stuff. But they all congregate together. So you're going to see different races on different planets. It's not a xenophobic race by any means, if that makes any sense. And we're currently starting um, right now at boot camp. So you guys have gone through your boot camp to train up to be soldiers in this little armada. And you're currently at the graduation ceremony. Uh, at the graduation ceremony, you guys enter a room. It's very well lit. It seems to be a lot of spotlights, jazz music playing. It's a very happy-go-lucky kind of thing. Everybody seems to be dancing. You can see a lot of like people yeah exactly you can see a lot of people like sipping flasks while nobody's looking everybody's being a generic asshole just because they've just been in school for like four or five years just learning bullshit that doesn't matter well at least they think it doesn't but really it's going to help them with life skills and as you guys turn around um you guys are all in separate parts of the room you guys are congregated in your friends um orca you're off to the right hand side of the room and you're kind of sitting um in a big group of people uh these are the more religious style people that have uh kind of grown up on your planet um because you're an elf you know that your home planet is called advance so it's e-v-a-n-e-s-s and the planet itself is a very very high carbon world where there's lots of trees, lots of swampy areas for your connection to your faith. Now, around the table to the right-hand side, you you're kind of sitting facing a main stage area. And when you look over to the right-hand side, uh, down the path are all of your classmates. There's about six or seven of them that go off to your right. And in the row ahead of you is all your superiors. So people that you've learned from, your professors... All that kind of stuff. And uh, basically, you're just sitting there and you're all standing to attention. And you take a look over and on the right-hand side, or the left-hand side of the room, you can kind of see all of the uh, all of the uh, gnomes and halflings that have been involved in uh, the engineering sections. So when you look over, you can kind of see them like rough and tumble. They, uh, they don't look necessarily you know bad or anything but you kind of just you kind of just put your nose up a little bit at them because you know you just don't understand why somebody of that size would want to be part of a large armada like what could they possibly bring to the table that i can't give myself kind of thing so you're sitting there waiting for the big speech that's going on whenever the graduation actually happens and you just get a light tap on your shoulder from behind <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so <clears throat> it's kind of a forceful tap, and it seems to be <clears throat> somebody that's kind of in a rush, but you get like kind of like a light breeze on the back of your head for how, how hard this tap is, and you're kind of confused. And when you look behind you, you see a, a, a very, probably a 5'3 blonde human female who seems to be also one of your classmates that you were friends with. Like, you guys used to study together. And her name is Jenna. And she goes, hey, Orca, Orca, hey, hey. And she's trying to get your attention. Raise an eyebrow and say, what? 
So as you turn around, you kind of notice that she's also, uh, there's also a couple of other security officers. These are boot camp officers, right? Haven't seen a day of service. And they're kind of giving you the thumbs up. And you don't really understand why they're doing that. But as you kind of look around, you notice that all of your classmates are staring at you for some reason. And you you kind of turn back around to kind of ignore them. And in front of you, you can see one of your professors stand up and start to walk up to the stage. Um, I'm going to get you to roll a perception check for me, please. So it's 17. As the person's walking away, you can actually see that it's kind of like a material or uh, a personnel file that she's bring uh, that this person is bringing up. And on the personnel file, you can notice the names of all the students that were in the corresponding uh, groups. So you can see on uh, the top of the page, it's all the security officers on the middle page. It's all of the engineers on the third. It's all of the command. And you can see that your name has special combination, but you don't know why. So this person's like walking up and briskly up to the stage. Um, over on the left-hand side, all, you you also hear like a small rustling, like the crowd's getting antsy. And as you look over to the left, you notice that the engineers are getting quite rowdy and you have no idea what's going on over there. You look and they're kind of like pushing each other jokingly. They're spilling drinks. They're acting like complete assholes. And you see this, you see no. this fucking... You see, <laughs> You see this gnome with like a stuck up view on his face look over towards you and give you a wave. And that introduces us to Victor. Victor, you're standing around, you take a look at left and right, and you're noticing that the party's pretty fucking dull here, man. Like the, like all these stiffs are here. And you just spent like, I want to say five or six years in the deepest textbook. So you're like you're ready to mingle. You you got a heart on for life. You want to get laid. You want to start swinging. You want to go, woo! Like, it's college days for you now, man. You just got, uh, you just spent probably the last three or four days in heavy, heavy examinations, trial runs, bomb defusals. Like, you've you've had a time. Quantum physics. Quantum physics, everything. Like, warp travel, everything. And as you take a look down, I'm going to get you to roll a perception check for me, please. Er, right. Dirty twenty one. So, um, the table you're sitting at is cr is quite full of plates and cutlery and food and stuff. But you can actually see on the uh the far edge of the table, just off to your left, you're kind of sitting at the left end of the table, facing forward, and all of your classmates are off to the right. You actually <laughs> see there's kind of like an ornate manual that's sitting on the table that you didn't notice before, and it's underneath the plates. Um, as you go ahead and grab it and pull it out, you actually see that it gives you a small description of what each, it's like a, a it's kind of, how to explain this? It's like a, an information manual that's like one uh, Galaxy 101 basics that kind of tells you a little bit about the planets in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in your solar system. I began to read it. Awesome. Because why not? Right on. So as you take a look around, you can see several uh, you can see several planets listed, and it's kind of like a it's kind of like a like a, a an iPad, but it just has the names of them on them, and it says click for more information. So the there's a few of them. There's Terra One, there's Tor Morel, there's Advance, there's Seshri Alpha, and Seshri Gamma. Which one would you like to click on? Alphabetic order. Whichever has the, uh, the most to the closest to the top of the A's. Close, uh, closest, uh, well, it's not an alphabetical order, but uh, the one at the top is Terra 1. Click. Okay, as you click on it, a robotic voice sounds out from the pad itself, and it says, Terra 1, carbon, O2 atmosphere, precious metals, iron, copper, Gold, Prosperity Level 2. Shit, I, no one listened. I swear, I, 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 it was here. I begin to click the other ones after okay. each and every one speaks. Next, next one is Tor Morel. Carbon, CO2 Atmosphere, Precious Metals, Diamond, Ferrite, Gold, Prosperity Level ferrite. 4. And then mm -hmm. Advance comes up, and this is going to be your hometown, Orca. This advance is like your planet that you're originally from. And it says carbon, O2H2O atmosphere, precious metals, 
uranium, oil, iron, prosperity level three. Sesh yep. Seshri Alpha, helium, O2 atmosphere, precious metal, salt, iron, iridium, copper, and Seshri Gamma, H2O atmosphere, precious material, iron, gold, plastic, oil, and pearls, prosperity level one. And then along the right hand side of it, uh, Fang, is would you, it's kind of like uh, from Starship Troopers, it's like, would you like to know more? <laughs> uh, oh, glad you like that, Brian. <laughs> um, I fucking love Starship Troopers. I just look at it and see if anyone's, if it's important and hide the thing with me. Right on. So you can go ahead and put that in your inventory if you wish. So across the table now to the right hand side, as you pass over the plates of large food products, legs of lamb, vegetables, um, all that kind of stuff, it goes over the cakes and the the pastry products, and then it gets to the command section. You can kind of see that these guys have barely moved since the start of this. They're very, very proud people. These are going to be your commanding officers. And on the farthest end of the table, you guys all end up spotting um, a black dragon in a red shirt. Now, red yeah. shirts obviously are command. Uh, <laughs> that's the color of command for this uh, campaign. And you can kind of see them. They're kind of like almost sitting. You know how uh, the pose for the military is arms behind your back crossed? That's what they're kind of doing, but sitting down at a table, and they are there's no speaking at all. Um, as you come back down to the right hand side, you can kind of see that on the back end, all the medical staff are like kind of like throwing uh like uh like electronic pads to each other, and there's heavy discussion, there's pointing, there's you don't know what you're talking about, you're only a first level cadet, and then uh off to the left hand side, uh you see a man by the name of Reginald. Reginald, you're sitting at a table trying to have a discussion with two other of your colleagues about how dangerous fungus can be at high temperatures. For any reason, if a fungus is able to survive high temperatures, there's a very big possibility that it could affect normal mass, especially in warp travel. So the first guy is arguing. He says, I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, Miss Leslie like taught us that it doesn't matter. The fungus that come from our galaxy are all carbon based. Like it does not make sense that anything would affect that if you go into warp. Like it does not make sense to me. And the guy to your left is just like, like, honestly, man, I can't have this conversation with you again. I mean, like you're, you're at my, like you're on my back every time I open my mouth and you have no evidence to support it. Um, I'm gonna get you to roll a knowledge religion check and a knowledge uh, a religion check and a nature check for me. So you're able to discern two things. The first thing that you're able to know is that you've actually attended quite a few courses on biology and molecular decay, and you're able to ascertain that fungus, as long as it's inside a living host, will not be affected by warp travel. But for any reason, if it does exit the body, then it should be picked up by the ship's environmental systems and a warning would go off on the main deck. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I'm always on this because, like, did you ever hear about Aspergillus? Mm -mm. Uh, that was a yeah, That was a mold that existed back in the 19th century that killed farmers a lot. It really heavily like affected food production, and that's what kind of kept us at a low technology level for so long, because we couldn't produce enough food to advance. So, if any of this mold, which exists naturally within all of us, naturally within the air, it, within everything, were to somehow mutate during warp travel, because what does warp travel do? It folds time. What does folding time do? Break reality. What does breaking reality do? Who the fuck knows yet? <laughs> <laughs> so as you kind of come down with your hand on the table to kind of like reinforce your point, both of them look at you. They put their hands <coughs> on their foreheads and both say, yeah, we got the loud mouth one here. Oh God, Mr. Know-it-all. 
God, no wonder you're getting all the straight A's. You never shut your God. And then you see one of his buddies push him to shut him up. And he goes, sorry, man, you know him. He gets a little bit of a drinky and then he starts mouthing off. Sorry, man. And he goes to give you kind of like a fist bump on the side. I just slam my cane into the ground, stand up, and start limping away. <laughs> So as you turn, fucking degenerate. <laughs> so as you look away, like the the talking points kind of settle down in the medical section. You kind of walk off to the left hand side, and there's like lots of like drinks and food that are separated on the table that have nothing to do with what's on the main tables that everybody's eating. Um, there's a lot of decorations, like there's a lot of marble casks and marble pillars that go up and around. But you see that the technology of the area is actually inlaid within the marble, so it looks stunning. I'm telling you, like, blues and purples and reds on, on the actual mechanical boards, but then it's inlaid with beautiful, beautiful, pure white quartz all the way down to the ground. The ground is kind of like set up in tile formation and it's mostly stone, but you can kind of see within the inlays of the stone, there's a gold lace that goes in between the blocks of the floor. It's, this place looks like it cost a fortune. Like I'm telling you, like you're like, oh shit, fancy dinner party. And as you kind Are there of take, servants or anything around? Yeah, hundred percent. There's um, so you're gonna notice like a mixed race. Like it's not just gonna be humans serving the dinner party. It's like a mix of all the races from the current solar system. And as you see them coming and forth, you can kind of see there's two doors on either side of the stage. The one to the left goes to the kitchen. The one that goes to the right is the bathrooms. Okay, I'm gonna go hang out by the kitchen for a minute. And just see if I can't grab one of them. Very good. Uh, so you waddle yourself over to the kitchen. I'm going to get everybody else to roll perception and insight checks, please. That's amazing. How did you fuck both of them? Oh, no, that was Orca. Okay, never mind. No, I still fucked up. I rolled a, a, a nat one for my perception. Okay. And I got a nine, a nine for my uh, that's insight. Just, that's just amazing. All right, so you're um, so you see so little because you're super hammered, <laughs> Mister Fang. Okay? Like you, you're like drinking out of your cup, and as you're looking, you can't tell where the food starts and where people walking by things. But you get the sense that you get the sense that you might be drinking too much. <laughs> where is the uh, the molecular accelerator? Oh, wait. Where... Oh yeah, I'm still at a party. <laughs> and I need you to roll a constitution save for me. Ah, oh, you bastard. Alright, constitution, I believe I gotta go main for that. Yeah, game. so the main page where it says saves, you just grab the corresponding one and throw it in the chat. 14. If you don't make it to the bathroom in the next five minutes, you're gonna piss yourself. <laughs> like, oh, I'm talking full go. relieving, no home charge. Like you're <laughs> like like you're standing there and you can feel it wiggling, like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> brrr, like it's like it's go time. Um, Ooh, Orca, go. you're able to spot two specific things in this area. Um, one is down towards where the kitchen door is. Um, there's several officers that are like leaning up against the wall in conversation, and you can kind of tell that one of them is going to be the speaker for the group. And as you take a look over there, you're able to discern that he's of admiral status. Um, on the right hand side of the room near the bathrooms, you can kind of see a grouping of all the different students, and they're playing a game of some sort. You don't really know what's going on over there, but they seem very like like circle of boys kind of thing, like boys with toys kind of thing. So I'm going to let you go ahead and see what you would like to do. You're going to end up being interested in what game they're playing. Um, very good. So what would you like to do? Do you want to just kind of watch them from a distance? Do you want to go kind of like poke your head over their shoulders? What do you want to do? Uh, watch from the distance for the time being. Okay. So um, where would you like to go? Would you like to get up from your table and go walk around or just keep an eye on them from where you are? Um, throw away for while I'm sitting up behind me. Say that again, sorry? From where I'm sitting at the time being. From where you're sitting from the time being? Cool. All right, so I want you to roll a perception check and hold on to that number until I tell you. And I'll ask you for it later. 
Um, so as you kind of are watching, you kind of see like a cup, like a stumbling idiot run into the bathroom real quick. You see, um, over on the right hand side, the guys are playing the game. You can see that the guy running to the washroom actually bumps into one of the guys playing the game as he's running by and he just looks and goes, <sighs> and then goes back to his game. Um, Brian, you're able to discern that uh, just taking a look around the room, you can actually see that there's a time of day listed. So there's a standard 36-hour day that they run on in this world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 36 hours, bro. Get used to it. <laughs> Good lord, do we live in the UPS? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to fucking love this. <laughs> So it's a 36 hour day and it's running towards midnight. So, you know, this is happening, uh, happening like close to the end of the day within 12 hours of, uh, everybody, uh, packing it up for the night. But you do see that listed underneath the time of day, you can actually see kind of like news apps going off, like kind of like the thing you see at the bottom of Fox news where it's like little information ticks. You kind of catch a few of them, ones like the worth, uh, so one is like the value of gold and where it is in the stock market. You see another one of endangered animals that you want to be able to uh, save and kind of like put back in the habitats and stuff like that. But the third one passes by and you read it and it says something about a dark, uh, dark matter black hole in that is kind of like, I want to say, three to four days travel outside of your solar system. And Clickety dickety. Beep. Yeah. So you can go ahead and just kind of like, a, there's like a pad in front of you that you can kind of tap on to kind of get more information. And as you do that, it opens up and it actually says that the black hole was actually, or not black hole, the wormhole, sorry, was actually discovered a uh, hundred years ago. But the entire solar system that you guys live in, the technology hasn't been good enough to actually make it there until very recently. And you guys are actually going to have access to the brand new slip drive ships. And this is gonna where, mutter. and this is where you're going to be starting your career. I'd like to mutter under my breath. If only those stupid sons of bitches would read the news. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We get held at a technological point for so long, and we, then we just jump forward, and everyone's like, oh, oh my god, it's magic. Okay, so um, so as you say that... <laughs> okay. So behind, on the, uh, behind you, you can kind of hear a couple little snickers. And as you look behind you, you can kind of see that it's like the school, it's like the school bullies behind you. And he's like, hey, that guy's talking to himself like always. <laughs> I'm just going to look him like I'm going to turn around and look at him and be like, you do realize that I'm the one that's going to be your doctor. You may want to watch what you say to me. I hear his voice and his video is like a, a second behind. Yeah, it's it's the same for mine too, but it just comes and goes. There's not really much we can do about it, unfortunately. Um, so, Brian, as you say that, you can kind of see, like, this guy's pretty stupid. He's actually just a, a like, a, he's going to be in uh, security. Like, he's just a big, long <laughs> dude. And he just oh, kind of goes, God. and he kind of goes, uh, he, yeah. And you know this guy's name is Gerald. Ensign Gerald. Ensign Gerald. Look, Gerald, just go have some fun. Go party or something. Do whatever it is you guys in Sectet do. Um, fucking Victor, you kind of kick in the bathroom door because you're, like, in such a super rush. And as you kick in the door... Um, what's plainly viewed to you is like a row of, <laughs> it's going to be a little weird. Imagine like 50 sinks in a row and 50 bathrooms in a row. And it's kind of like, uh, an escalator that takes you all the way down, kind of like you'd see at the airport with little step out sections. So it's like, this is a very high fancy area. So, um, you kind of take piss a look. In the sink. Oh, I know what. <laughs> You want to piss in the sink? Sure. Do what well, you I, well, I'm drunk, so... <laughs> you know I thought what? this was going to be like some Austin Powers shit where you just like pee on everything as you stand on the uh, like the conveyor belt and it's like one big long trough. <laughs> there you go. 
I gotta go whip out and just let it go down the hill. And then I go piss. Right on. So you kind of like you're like you're starting to notice that like um as you put like your hands on the sink, you realize that the sink is actually at forehead level. Yeah. Where's the stools? Oh, it's fucking honkies here. Hey, what's up? I see a hand. Are you a handyman? I'll give you a handyman. Mm, well, you oh, offer. Come on, do just it. so you know, I'm just so you guys know, I'm making an, uh, a decal for when Honky joins. That's like Super Smash Bros. It's like ah, da, 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 da. new <laughs> character has appeared. Is, is this still the blonde Honky, the blonde Donkey Kong that comes across with it? Oh, well, I hope so. From Hunt, it, it has to be. If it's not the blonde Donkey Kong from oh, Hunt, it's not, it's not me. Oh, Falcon Punch! Falcon but anyways. Punch! So, um, Fang, so as you see, like, the actual sink itself is at, is at forehead height, and you can see on the wall there's a large panel that uh, you can put your finger on and move it up and down, and it'll actually move the sink down to your location. I happily hit the one that uh, makes it go down. All right, roll me a reflex save, because <laughs> you drunk bitch. Uh, <laughs> slam head to the fucking ground. I see where this goes. <laughs> All right, would that be in the uh, uh, so reflex would be dex under save. Sorry, I'm still a three point five. I I love three point five, and that'll be where. Yeah, I'll we are three five horse. Ooh. Even though uh, I play yeah. five. All right, so I as you go to five. like put your hand on the panel and move it up and down, <laughs> you kind like of me. you kind of you kind of hit it with four fingers and then just kind of scratch it. And you're kind of looking up at the same time, and as you slap it, the sink kind of knocks you in the forehead as it starts to come down. It doesn't deal any damage, but you can tell your teeth chattered together on that hit. So it's like, ow. And then, and then the sink's just in normal position. Oh, you bastard. I, I know you're against me, you stupid techno. And one of these days, I'll rule the... Rule the uh. Right on, and I'm going to get you to roll a... But um, but um, what's it gonna be? What should it be now? Uh, it's going to be a. I'm gonna actually take your passive perception. So on your front page, next to your saves, to the left hand side, you'll see P E R C, and that's your passive perception. All right, left hand side. Uh, right hand side. So right it's hand. it's go to strength save and go to the left and it's the number with a green plus next to it. So P E R C. Yeah. Thirteen plus. Yeah. So it's thirteen. Your passive perception is thir thirteen. Yeah. Who's rolling a die? All right. So uh, you, as you're kind of like Michael Michael Jackson pissing into the sink, one leg is <laughs> over top of the sink on the on the mirror. <laughs> And your head is like below the sink. You're holding on. You're just, it's just not working very well for you. You kind of overhear a small conversation happening in the stalls next to you. And you kind of identify them that these guys might actually be quite important figures. Um, I'm going to get you to roll me a history check while I finish explaining what happens. Um, as you kind of hear, you can hear that it's one officer talking to another, and then they're excited to be able to get back out onto the ships. Um, nothing really has been going on in our solar system, so it's been kind of like peace times, really. Like, the economic boom of all the planets trading with each other is just flawless. And uh, they're talking about how excited they get to be the first ones to go explore the next solar system with the new slip drives that have been developed for the ships. And, uh... What you're able to discern is that they're actually talking about giant galaxy class cruisers. I'm talking like 20,000 crew members plus. Like these things are massive. I rolled a 20. Oh, we're talking fucking. Uh... I, I, I know it good. Yeah. So you've actually, you've actually, you're not necessarily you, but your, uh, your teachers. The reason why they're teaching is is because they were the ones that came up with the technology, not the not the slip drive itself, but like all the technology attached to it. So you guys have developed the the screen console displays, the chairs, the beds, the ceiling, the floor, the shitter, everything you guys have had your fingers into. And you can kind of 
Yeah. So as you kind of like think back to it, you actually realize that you're very excited because nobody from your class has ever been even off like outside of like just their two planets. And it's quite a travel at highest warp to be able to get out of your solar system. And you're just really happy to be there pissing upside down into a sink. 